and we're going to assault it with a variety of threats. Now what you're starting to see is bullets that are being destroyed. You stopped all those rounds. I'm John LaPlume, I'm the Vice President of Product Line Development and Strategy for First Spear. Today we're doing a field assessment of some of our Level 2 soft armor, how it reacts to various threats. This is our premier Level 2 package. Uh, as you can see, it balls up pretty small, it's quite flexible. We feel this is really important because it lets the equipment conform to your body better and also when you're in narrow spaces, moving quickly, you don't have as much hanging off you. And we're about to show you how light this panel is. So as you can see displayed, it's 1.4 pounds uh, for a single front panel. Uh, we're going to take this, put it on Manny the mannequin behind us, and we're going to assault it with a variety of threats at contact and close quarters distance. Multiple calibers, multiple angles, uh, as well as firing on the edge of the vest and all about the perimeter of the vest. This is one of our apex threats for this package. It's a short barreled 357 Magnum, 158 grain, Jacketed hollow point at contact. As you can see, there's a little bit of impact damage to the rear of the carrier, but there's no penetration of the armor system. This is a second shot against our level two package. It's 158 grain, 357 Magnum, gold dot hollow point. It's a long barrel 357 Magnum, a little bit more velocity, not quite at contact, but at close quarters. As you can see, the rear of the carrier took some more impact damage, but there's not a complete penetration of the armor system. This is another threat that we're putting against our level two package. 357 SIG, 125 grain, full metal jacket, flat nose. We're gonna do multiple shots. Next threat's gonna be the 40 Smith & Wesson, 180 grain, full metal jacket, flat nose. This will also be a multi-strike engagement. Again, you can see the carrier is getting beat up a little bit. It's a hard rubber surface here on Manny the Mannequin, but we don't have any complete penetration to the armor system. Uh, that was multiple strikes from 357 SIG and from 40 Cal, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go for more strikes in our next evolution. Next threat's gonna be a 9mm, 124 grain, XTP bonded hollow point. Uh, this is a pretty tough penetrator, and if everything goes well, we're gonna reload and, and put some 124 grain full metal jacketed NATO ball as well. This is close quarters, multiple strikes. You can see some damage and some deformation here to the back of the carrier, but there's no complete armor penetrations to the system. Next threat's 45 ACP. This is 185 grain jacketed hollow point match. This will be a multi-shot assessment. So now we're gonna fire multi-shot engagement with a 230 grain gold dot hollow point. 45 ACP suppressed. But again, you'll notice there's no penetration of the vest. We're gonna step it up a notch. We're gonna fire multiple shots from the MP5 SD, nine millimeter, 124 grain full metal jacketed NATO. As you can see, the back of the packaging is getting a little torn up now, as well as the back of the carrier continues to be beat up, but there's still no complete penetrations of the armor system after 28 rounds at close quarters. Now that we've completed our multi-caliber, multi-shot field assessment, I'm gonna be turning the table over to Mr. Sam White, our Vice President of Applied Science. So the ballistic vest has now been shot. I believe it was 1.4 before it was tested and now 2.5 pounds. And we're gonna tear it apart and see what happened. 
There's, there's two basic materials that you're going to notice in this vest. The first on the strike face is going to be a woven material, and it's going to be backed by a non-woven material, both of which have high-performance fibers in them, both of which add to the stopping capabilities of this vest. On the strike face, as the rounds have hit and begin to mushroom, many of those rounds are simply going to fall off of the front of the vest and are captured in the ripstop itself. And you'll notice that these rounds, upon impact, go from a full metal jacket conical shape into more of a mushroom shape as they hit these high performance fibers. So these fibers being six to ten times stronger than steel. So let's look into the vest itself. There's two rounds that fell to the bottom after the second layer. Two more rounds found in the third. And a lot of times where you'll find a majority of your rounds is the interface between the fabric and the non-woven material. And what we're going to start to see as I peel back these layers of unidirectional non-wovens, I'm going to start seeing less and less trauma and less and less holes as a result of the impacts because they're going to be found early on. So within just a few layers of the unidirectional, we're running out of bullets. What we now have are multiple layers of non-penetrated material. We're talking about a substantial number of ballistic layers that are still behind the last stop bullet. So how is this working? Well, what happens is when that bullet first impacts this material, will actually act like a wall. It's trying to push those fibers out of the way and continue to drop further in. As it does it and starts to hit these very strong fibers, the, bu the bullets will then start to mushroom. And as they mushroom and become much larger in diameter, it makes it even more difficult. And exponentially, it's gonna engage more fibers and stop at a faster rate. So the, the key is to make sure you've got very high performance fibers, get those things up front, the bullet starts to mushroom, and just within a few layers, you stopped all those rounds.